talk to you again in a second. Thank you very much indeed. They just need a maximum of 30 points now to make absolutely sure. I mean, you start to wonder now what date they, they could get their hands on it, don't you? That's right. And I th I'm, do you know what? I'm sure Jurgen Klopp will be thinking that now because there's, they're in three competitions. Um, people talking about well, leave the FA Cup alone, just focus on the Premier League and the Champions League. But it might be that they've got nothing to play for for the last two months of the season if things go you know, a certain way. They might have already won the league and they might be out the European uh, Cup. So you never know. So it'll be really interesting to see how he juggles his pack now. But I'm sure he'll still want to go strong in the Premier League right to the end because there's so many records that this team could beat and points totals, all kinds of records. So it will be interesting to see how he juggles his pack from now on in. You, you've, you've won this. You've got your hands on that title. You know how consistent you have to be. I mean, yeah. just a word on, on, on Liverpool's levels at the moment that they're producing week in, week out, Robin. Yeah, it is important to uh, uh, yeah, get the points in during the difficult games. You know, uh, in, in my first season at Manchester United as well, uh, I think we came behind 26 times during that league, during that season, and uh, most games we still got something out of it. And uh, Liverpool today, for the last 30 minutes, they were struggling because Manchester United was playing really well. They, they were putting pressure constantly. And uh, John, John said it as well, uh, United had one or two chances, uh, but they stayed and, and, and they were solid from crosses and they just uh, stuck in there and they uh, get the result over the line. And uh, that's a true sign of uh, champions. Yeah, we talk about talent and obviously that's first and foremost. We heard Jordan Henderson uh, talking again there about the mentality, the strength of mentality, the manager's on at them all the time to improve. He wants more. Yeah, as he's talking, I was almost feeling sorry for him, thinking, you should be enjoying all this, but they're that focused. They keep saying, next game, next game, next game. You sh you'd think that the quality of this team, you know, they should be almost having a party at the end of every... They've just beaten Manchester United 2-0. Uh, but they're so determined to win this league. They're so focused on it. They know what happened last season, having thrown a few points lead away, that you're just not going to get a slip of the tongue, let alone a, a, a slip on the pitch. I mean, they're absolutely brilliant, doing everything to the second, and uh, there's no way on earth they're going to throw this away. Mm. And when United look back on the goals, particularly the first one, yeah. at nil-nil, they'll be this way down. He would have been challenging Vir Virgil van Dijk, and it wouldn't have been a goal. He's a brilliant header of the ball himself, is Maguire. So he just did enough uh, to alter the course of play there, and of course, you don't need to give Virgil van Dijk a second chance. Now, you both said to me before the game... Um, Mo Salah, for instance, hadn't scored against Manchester United. Yeah. That would be playing on his mind. He can put he that one to bed now. You could see what it meant to him, couldn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he just made a comment about it, that uh, it, it was in his head, something like that, uh, during half. The team uh, to beat Manchester United. You know what it's, it's like as a Liverpool player in that fixture? Forget the context of the story of this season. That isolated fixture when that whistle goes. Yeah, I mean... Just everything at the moment at Liverpool is perfect. I'm watching the fans walking out of the stage and then I'm just having a little moment and thinking, you know, this is like once in a lifetime type of stuff. OK, it might last three years, it might last five years, whatever it might be, but you just don't see your team in your life really playing at this level, being so dominant, being so good, going to Anfield and being so confident that they're going to beat teams like Manchester United, like Manchester City, like Chelsea, all these great teams. And, you know, I think... The, the players, but certainly the fans are pinching themselves at the moment, just thinking it can't get any better. The new, beautiful new stadium, all stands that are being built, the plans, the new training grounds opening very soon. You know, there's, there's players that you can relate to that have come through the academy. There's... But their relentless approach at the top of the league has continued. Robin, we talked before the game that United wouldn't get many chances, but when they did, they needed to be clinical. They did get them, but yeah. they didn't finish them. Pereira had one big chance in the first half. Machel, of course, um, side-footed. And when you're playing a team like Liverpool with their kind of numbers, when you get an opportunity like that, you yeah. simply have to take it with the fine margins, don't you? And they force you into, you know, things like that, don't they? If you, you know, you get one chance, you have to score, and if you don't, you get punished, and that's the yeah. standard that you're playing against. Um, Martial there just trying to knock the spots off it. He's only eight, nine yards out. Um, which is strange, um, you know, the one thing when it's bouncing, the one thing that you have to do is con concentrate on keeping it down. His first goal, uh, in his first game for Manchester United, he did side foot it. Mm. Yeah. So he, had it, so he has it in him, you know. He, he, he's a player who can make that decision at that uh, particular time. Is that the fine margins in those situations for decision-making? Exactly that. Yeah, normally this is the yeah, difference b uh, between a good player and a 
top player. But Marcel has proven that, that he is a top player, in my opinion. But he just made, made the wrong decision here. It's all about percentages as well. If you break it down, yeah. you know, if, if, if you do the right thing all the time, give yourself more of a chance. If he goes side foot there and just tries to aim at the, at the far post, I reckon he scores 80% of the time. Trying to lash it as hard as you can, like he did, maybe it's 50, 60% of the time. Yeah. Well, all those small percentages are every single time. If you keep making the wrong decisions in front of goal, you're not going to score as many as, you, as, as you, the man next door type of thing. So yeah. that's just life. And that's where the best players make the best decisions in the big moments. That's the most important thing, in the big moments. And that's why the great players always score in that situation. Mm. Alexander-Arnold at Anfield. The team are relentless. The manager is as well, isn't he? He <laughs> sounds <laughs> like it, doesn't he? Yeah. And that's probably his, his job now. I mean, I know they, they train hard. Um, you know, they don't train for long. But when they train, he demands 100% effort. And you train like that. You know, you, you uh, end up playing like that as well. And, and, of course, his message in the dressing room has got to be now just on the mental side. They're all fit. They've got a massive lead in the Premier League. It's all about what's between your ears now. Keep focused, keep concentrating. Don't listen to outside influences. Just keep doing your stuff. Right. Um, let's get back to the Manchester United chat because we were delighted to hear from Trent Alexander-Arnold. Big news coming out of the mouth yes. of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer there about Marcus Rashford. Double stress fracture of his back and yeah. I know you have personal experience of this. Yeah, I, uh, when I was about late 18, I made my debut, uh, but before that I was playing with the reserves in the under 19s on uh, Saturday, Monday, Saturday, Monday for a couple of months. Then with the first team, uh, after I made my debut, I played another six months, uh, Sunday, Thursday, Sunday, Thursday, and then I had a similar injury, uh, a stress fracture uh, in my lower back. I was out with that for uh, four months. You, you can't really do much. You have to just rest and let it heal. But it is a difficult one because it, it always stays a little bit of a, like a weak spot. You know? um, even now, it, it is not that I'm uh, like in pain or something, but it's a, it's a sensitive area. So you have to be really careful with that. And the obvious question is just how devastating a blow is that for Manchester United? That they will miss him so much. Like I said before, he's the MVP, he's the best player, creates the most, scores the most goals, uh, even at that age. So it's a big blow for Manchester United. And England, you know, with yeah. Harry Kane at the moment, that's going to be out for, for a while. Then, you know, Gareth Southgate was watching on today and I'm sure he's not going to be too happy either. But from Manchester United's point of view, it's a bitter blow. They're chasing that fourth space. They need their talisman. He scored double anyone else uh, in that Manchester United team, so big blow for them. And the player as well, because as Ole Gunnar Solskjaer said, he'd had a previous back complaint before he suffered this on Wednesday. Yes, I mean, it, it might be coincidental that he had back pain anyway, and then obviously in the, in the previous game he's landed awkwardly, um, and he's, you know, obviously they've found a couple of fractures, which is, is never a, a good sign. And I guess it's just rest now. Uh, hopefully he's, he's back as soon as possible for Manchester United's sake more than anyone and his own sake um, because he was progressing into a fine player, you know, world-class player. Mm. And Manchester United could build a team around somebody like that. So huge blow for, for everyone concerned. You heard Ole Gunnar Solskjaer say they're not desperate for a new striker, but they'll look around in January. If they don't make any signings in that forward department mm. without Marcus Rashford, yeah. Can they finish fourth? Can they get in those Champions League spots? Well, I think it will be tough. Um, I do believe that he's <coughs> not using those words because otherwise you have the headlines and stuff. But I think they're quite eager for a striker <laughs> because uh, they uh, need one. And uh, short term, but, but long term as well. You know, I, I, I think it's good to have competition at the club of the calibre of Manchester United. You, you need to have constant competition. Uh, so. Uh, I'm pretty convinced that they're very eager to get a strike in. So difficult though, isn't it? It's easy wanting one. It's easy having the money for one in, in many yeah. ways. The hardest thing is how how can you find someone good enough to play for Manchester United yeah. that's going to be better than But than as what well, you've got? if you are yeah, Manchester United, you always have to pay double or triple the price, which does, uh, doesn't make things easier. You know, it's it's a difficult uh, deal to uh, to to yeah, happen when you. Manchester United, because every club, uh, if they hear Manchester United is interested, ah, let's triple the money. Yeah, it's, it, it is difficult, especially halfway a season, to, to get a quality striker in. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be very hard for them. They don't score enough goals, really, as it is. 
Um, you look at that, and they should be better. And you just wonder whether young Mason Greenwood will be asked even more yeah. at his age now. Yeah, which is um, uh, which I do get, but he's very young. He's mm. still 18. Yeah. You know, it's not honest towards him to uh, let him live with all that kind of pressure to be the number one of uh, Manchester United at that age. You know, I think it's better to give him time. He's very talented. Uh, he uh, he's very. All round, he can uh, score goals like yeah, like like he's shown. I think he scored eight already. Mm. Uh, but but I think it's important for him to give him time.